G'day Smoke and Dagger fans, we've got a real treat for you today. Today we're doing the Weber Dartboard Challenge. Now Gus, what exactly does that mean? Well we've had this idea on the back burner for a while, so we're pretty much dividing a dartboard into a series of quadrants. We're going to throw blindfold and see where we go. Uh, we're going to let the barbecue gods decide what we're dishing up later today. That sounds fun, but also a little bit nerve wracking. And dangerous. <laughs> Stay tuned. A few moments later. Nailed it. Yeah, so I'm pretty happy with my throws today. So I got the Weber Smoky Mountain, beef, and chili. Well, Weber Smoky Mountain, a real favorite of mine. Um, quite often I do briskets on that, so beef plays right into my strengths, but you know, Angus is expecting that of me, so I think I might mix it up a little bit. Look, I don't use chili a whole lot. I know I should, but uh, I'm gonna go and see what the uh, local Asian grocer has and maybe pull something out of the bag. So I threw pork, the uh, Weber kettle, and honey. So three sort of options which play right into my hands. So I'm pretty happy with that. So I was a Weber kettle novice for quite some time until I bought my own and started cooking on it. So I've got a few tricks and tips now and I feel I'm pretty confident with a Weber kettle so it should be a good one. So I usually use granulated honey and that's a part of like you know the barbecue rubs that I'm using uh, traditionally for pork as well so that's definitely helpful but I think I might go a little bit sticky and sweet in this one and get some actual honey on the barbecue. Well, I guess pork can be done several different ways on a barbecue, but I'm going to try and maybe get some of that tasty pork crackle on the mix. Uh, everyone loves pork crackle. All right, folks. Well, I've chosen to do some beef plate ribs from the lovely region of Margaret River in Western Australia. Let's open these bad boys up and have a look, eh? All right, so we've opened these up. They look pretty good, actually. Nice and meaty. Not too much fat. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna take a bit of this excess fat and seal the skin off the top, because I want the bark to adhere and penetrate as much as possible. The other point of note, I'm not gonna take the membrane off, but that doesn't mean I'm gonna eat it. So that's gonna hold everything together. And then we're gonna just peel it off at the end after it's cooked. Let's get started. Remember, when you're removing fat, try and always cut away from yourself. And also have the knife at a slight upwards angle so you don't cut the meat either. All right, folks, so as you can see, Taking the majority of the fat off and a fair bit of the silver skin. Doesn't have to be perfect, it's not going to make too much of a difference there. You can see the start of a really nice piece of meat. Let's get some rub on this. Alright folks, we're going to add a base binder of yellow mustard, nothing special there. And then we're going to add three layers of rubs. We're going to start with a little bit of jalapeno salt. It's got a punchy flavour so we're not adding too much of that. Then we're going to do our majority layer of hardcore kind of all black. Really nice rub that's going to give a great finishing color. And then finally, we're going to hit it with Lane's barbecue chili lime. My special ingredient today is chili, so I want these, these beef ribs to have a little bit of bite. Flip this over, and we're going to start in the bottom. The reason we're going to start in the bottom, the membrane's on this side, so if any of the rub falls off, doesn't really matter. All right, hit it with a little bit of our uh, jalapeno salt. 
and then our hardcore carnival. And then we're just gonna finish with our chili lime. Once that's all on, pat it in. Don't forget to do the sides. And once the bottom and the sides are done, we're just gonna do the same thing on top. Bit of salt, bit of hardcore carnivore, and a bit of chili lime. Pat that in. All right, I've made a real mess here, so I'm gonna let this sit for about half an hour while I get the barbecue going. See you soon. All right, folks. So here's my setup for today on the Smoky Mountain. So it's gonna be a longer cook. So I'm gonna use the menu method. So I'm gonna pour some hot coals right into the center here. And that heat is gonna slowly expand outwards. So that's gonna be absolutely perfect for an eight to 10 hour cook today. Lovely. So now we've got our charcoals in there. You can see it hot in the center, cold on the outside. We're gonna add a few chunks of red gum and we're gonna put the rest of the body of the Smoky Mountain on fill the water bowl and let it get up to heat. As you can see, she's just coming up to temp. We're gonna have this sit between 200 and 250 Fahrenheit or 100 and 120 Celsius to start. Progressively get warmer and warmer as the cook goes on. All right, folks, we've got our ribs here. Starting to get some decent jiggle. That's what you want. So we're just gonna wrap these. Of course I'm an idiot and I've ripped the paper. We're gonna double wrap these. Chuck our probes back in. Feels like butter already. So today I'm cooking a pork belly roast for this dartboard challenge, mostly because it's easy to cook on a, something like a wet bit kettle. So I know I'm gonna be uh, turning out pretty good product in the next, uh, you know, 20, 30 minutes once I get it on. So if you haven't cooked pork belly before, the whole idea is to remove the moisture from the meat. So we just gently get a towel, pat it dry, removing any of that excess moisture from the packaging and what we're going to do is increase the surface area of the skin and this is going to help in forming that lovely crackle that you know and love when you get a really well done pork belly so what i'm doing now is scoring the skin with a knife best use a sharp knife here so that creates these just a bit of extra surface area and when we do our dry brine in just a minute, we're gonna get better penetration of the salt and the flavor going back into the meat. So we finished scoring the pork belly, but we're gonna go one step further. And to do that, we're gonna use uh, this handy implement called a jacquard. So that's just got a quarter dozen uh, sharp little needles that are gonna go straight in, penetrating the skin into the meat. And act like just another ingress point for our salt and our dry brine to get to work. We rest this pork before we put it on. So working our way through, we can see we've got a lovely half a dozen little hole there. And what I like to do is just, just let really know who's boss. And that's gonna let the pork belly now be perforated in several hundred little cuts. And that's great for our purposes here. All right, now we've got our pork belly nice and scored. And um, we've run the jacquard through it. I'm gonna use a dry rub. This is gonna be a Portuguese seasoning. It's so really heavy on the paprika, onion, garlic, and it's gonna create the nice base flavor profile for our pork belly. So the other benefit of something like a Portuguese rub, it's gonna add a very distinct orange flavor. And because our secret ingredient today is honey, which is a very sweet, powerful flavor. We're gonna to wanna to contrast that with something a bit spicier and also visually with something a bit more bold, such as like an orange paprika-based 
sugar, garlic, and onion powder, salt rub. Plus we've got some chili flakes in there, so this should be really nice, complementing the honey glaze that we're gonna put on this pork belly once it's done dry brining. Turning it over now, and we're gonna try and not spill all of the rub everywhere. Flipping it over, and coating the meat portion of this pork belly. Beautiful. Alright guys, really quickly, that's how to uh, prepare and dry brine a pork belly with some Portuguese spices. Scoring the top and using a jacquard. This should come up nice, crunchy, lots of flavour. We'll just let the salt go to work for maybe 30-40 minutes in the fridge, then get it onto the Weber kettle. Yeah, look, the nerves are starting to uh, fire up. I had a plan, sticking to the plan. Uh, may not be going perfectly to plan, but I'm hopefully gonna get this pork belly out and have it delicious, uh, especially with that bit of honey element at the side, and that's what, uh, that's what I'm here to do. Look, no one likes a soggy pork belly. I get that, so I'm gonna try and bring a bit of crispness, uh, hopefully get that crackle firing. That's the objective. Uh, let's see if we can get there. Yeah, I'm probably sitting at the six, seven, maybe pushing eight on the nerves factor, but uh, still rave, rave hope that I'm gonna get this cook over the line. Feeling pretty good about these ribs at the moment. The only thing that's gonna go wrong for me at this point is rushing it. So if I don't let them take the time that they deserve, we're gonna get shit product. So, so me versus Angus in a head-to-head -head race right now, I'm paying a dollar one. So I think today the ribs gets my vote for the win. Um, it was good, good bark, um, good tenderness, and a good smoke ring. Again, it's ribs for me. The pork was great, but the, the just the flavour of the ribs was just yeah, it was it was all there. I feel like if it was pork belly versus pork belly, it might be a different outcome. But I feel like those beef ribs are really spectacular and really stole the show today. Sorry, Angus. <laughs> <laughs>